Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Center News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a breakdown on the Philadelphia Phillies, as unfortunately they could not prevail again, getting swept in a two gamer, which is a weird sweep in baseball to consider it a, a sweep, but it is obviously still on the scorecard. So, getting swept in a two gamer by the Texas Rangers. And why did they do that? Because just like they did in the Mets series minus the patch runs that they've been doing at too many times minus the Rocky series where they swept them because of a good onslaught of offense and a couple other games this season, it's been patch scoring or no scoring for the Phillies. And that's what it was in the Mets series on the road. And that's what it was in this series at home against the Texas Rangers. Obviously, um... Ranger Suarez left the pitch in the happy zone to a righty. Down low, Mitch Garver was able to smoke show that line drive. Wasn't a deep drive homer, but was a smoke show line drive into the flower beds in left. Reese Hoskins did answer back. Fortunately, you have a former infielder, though, in left. I feel like a guy that's a great fielding left fielder probably would have got to that ball. But nonetheless, he was able to get a double. Maybe that can get Reese show going fully as we still are looking for Reese Hoskins to really get going in this season. As he's a big bat, the Phillies are trying to still see completely get going. And that would really help get the team going as a whole, as well as Kyle Schwarber, who really sucked uh, in this game and also had a key out. Um, in this game as well, which was against Rangers pitcher King when he had a key out, and then I believe it was Boehm that got out as well um, against King, and then uh, Bryce Harper against him, I believe, was the third guy when he painted one in the outside corner and Harper struck out. So the Phillies had opportunities in this game, and it's kind of a broken record for not just this season, but the last few seasons when we haven't been able to see the most out of this team, they didn't take the full advantage of opportunities. Obviously, Hoskins got a double, like I said, uh, in that same inning in the first. DD got a, a single, but then when did the Phillies score again? I talked about a patch freaking run. you got to score more consistently. In the eighth inning when JT hit his second home run of the season, and hopefully that can... JT's had a good overall season, started great, took a little bit of a dip in the hitting category, but still I think has had a good overall season. So maybe this can get him ticking right back fully up into the great hitting category because he had a great game in the first game of the series, two for three, as well as drawing up base balls. But the Phillies couldn't prevail because in this game... Uh, Ranger Suarez battled. He was able to battle through five innings. Only um, three of his runs were earned, but he didn't have his best stuff. Sir Anthony Dominguez was the one that gave up the uh, the home run there. To, or not the home run, excuse me, the double to Zach Rex. Um, as Rex comes in, who's been good in the minor leagues, he's a late bloomer in the bigs, as Rex was able to get a double off of Dominguez. Marcus Simeon then singled off of the same Sir Anthony Dominguez, so he didn't have his sharpest stuff. But also, I don't blame Sir Anthony. He's the first one. I think he is going to be a very good reliever for us, us this year. It already has shown signs of that in many games. It's just he's going to have these off bugaboo games because he hasn't pitched in a full almost two freaking years until this season. So I, I, I expect that from him, so I'm not going to get on him or anything like that. Uh, Nelson was then able to come in and continue to do his thing. Same with Bellotti. So the two guys that have been doing really good as our depth relievers came in. It was just the same telltale thing. Not enough freaking scoring for the Phillies. And then obviously in the second game, there was not enough scoring. This was a game I feel immensely bad for Zach Weary. He pitched six innings against the Rockies his outing before. And now pitched 7.2, 7 and two-thirds. And probably could have even went deeper in this game. But Joe decided to go to the lefty against Nathaniel Lau. I think Wheeler definitely could have gotten Nathaniel Lau out. That's just my purview, but it worked out as Alvarado was able to get him out. Knable came in and had a good inning thanks to the beautiful fielding of Gene Segura. So this game was a pitching gem until... And also there was some hard-hit balls in this game, obviously by Reese Hoskins, by Didi Gregorius, and also by Nicholas Castellanos as well. It's just... Unfortunately, the Phillies were not able to have enough offense, and they literally did not score. Neither team scored, so hence the pitcher's duel of the century until the 10th damn inning. Also one of the more probably, if you're not pitcher's duel fans and want to see offense like a lot of the New Age fans, boring games for a lot of people to be at. I don't mind still watching pitcher's duels mixed into a season, 
But with this year with the Phillies, I would like to see more of a, the bats breaking out because it's getting forever frustrating when you've had the Rocky series and then a few mix in of games to conclude this video. But otherwise, you just had patch runs like they had in that Mets series on the road. Their current opponent coming up starting tonight at 645. I'll preview that series later. And then against the Texas Rangers at home as well. I mean... You're not going to win many series if you're the Philadelphia Phillies where you score five total runs. I don't care if it's a two-game series because in the first game, you didn't pitch well enough, plus you didn't field well enough, plus you scored four total runs, which is enough at times if you can average four out over time, but we haven't even been able to do that because the Phillies' averages are a little bit higher when it comes to runs per game because of that Rocky series. And a couple other games early in the season, but we all know as fans and as people that cover the team, it's the averages are higher because of an X amount of games, not because that's been really the case of the Phillies' consistent scoring whatsoever. It hasn't. So we have to see more consistent scoring going forward in conclusion in this video. And we have to see more games like um, Zach Wheeler was able to pitch in his last two. Kyle Gibson's been pitching more consistently this season. And we have to continue to see Aaron Nola seem like he's starting to really, at least in my own opinion, trend in the right direction. And hopefully we'll continue to see that tonight from Knowles, who already has 34 strikeouts in the season. He pitched six innings in his last outing against the Mets, seven the outing before by Milwaukee, and five and a third against Colorado. So his last three outings have been pretty stud, not pretty stud, pretty solid, I should say, for Aaron Nola. So I think he's starting to get back his, uh, his I guess I should say, his swagger is probably the best, not his um, spunk, but his swagger is the best way to put it. So I think Nola with his swagger back, Wheeler starting to get his groove back. Gibson's been good. Suarez has just been inconsistent and hasn't found his control yet coming off of his injury, but has still been able to battle for us and hasn't got help from fielding in a couple of his games as well, so that affects his overall numbers. So I think we have to take that all into a factor. Overall, it's just been too much inconsistencies from this team. If they get the pitching like they did in the second game, they don't get the hitting. They get four runs in the first game, but it was still patch runs, obviously. Like I said, which is the problem with the Phillies. They need to score more consistently, obviously. You can't just be getting two all your runs into three of them in the first and then not score again into the eighth. Usually that ain't going to fly unless if you have one of the best staffs in baseball. And I want to say the Phillies on paper have one of the best staffs in baseball. They just have a staff that's performing and some guys overperforming like the Nelsons, uh, Norwoods, and of course Bellotti's of the world. So I think there's still plenty of time to grow. I don't freak out in seasons until Memorial Day. That's kind of my rule as I started really doing this channel and really started researching stuff and analyzing stuff and realizing that's kind of when... You just start freaking out, so I'm not at a freak out moment yet, but it is time that the Phillies offense has to step up, and I'll talk about that in my series preview later, because they are 11-14. and 14. They were back around 500, obviously, going into this series, but then fall, uh, because of the, after the final game against the Mets, when they came into this series, uh, they were 11-12, and 12, but now they fall completely back into the kind of netherland, I guess to put it. Um, 11 and 14, three games below 500. I would like to see the Phillies try to stay in the realm of only, I don't want them to even hit five, but five games or less below 500 because once you start falling more there, I'm still, again, not freaking out before Memorial Day, but that's when it's starting to get worrisome at very least. So this has been the Sports Fan News Philadelphia Phillies cast. Please continue to subscribe down below. Up above in the easy to use widget to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Hopefully our Phillies can get growing and going as well because they have been too inconsistent this season. I'll be doing the Mets preview later today. Stay tuned for that. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and go Phil.